Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Greg Woodworth, and I am the founder of uh, Sergeant Safety Services as well as Cornerstone Safety Products, uh, both of companies of which uh, are represented here today. Uh, and let me just explain a little bit about what uh, each company does real briefly for you. Um, Sergeant Safety is, uh, is the preferred uh, trainer for TEG uh, corporate, uh, and we do uh, electrical safety training for all of the TEG contractors as they come through the system. Uh, we specialize uh, basically in arc flash training. We've been doing this for 15 years. Uh, we bring a lot of specialized equipment into the class. Uh, we have a lot of equipment in the, in the room next door where we do some hands-on uh, training as well. Um, and, and we're going to spend the next couple of days uh, going over with technicians what uh, uh, some of the hazards are associated with arc flash and how to protect ourselves. Um, subsequently, we have a lot of equipment here in the room, uh, and it's considered to be PPE, which is personal protective equipment. And um, I'm going to go ahead and explain how this equipment works. Uh, and essentially, uh, when we do this uh, in class, we talk about uh, uh, arc faults and uh, fault current uh, and changing fault current into incident energy. And when we measure incident energy, we do it uh, by a term called calories which is a unit of heat uh, and in doing so each one of the clothing uh, each one of the articles of clothing that we have uh, around us here uh, has a specific arc rating for uh, uh, use in the field so we're, we're going to start uh, pretty basic here today with uh, uh, essentially the uniform that we've uh, pretty much identified as a basic uniform that a TEG technician would use. Uh, and essentially we would start with a, uh, a six ounce uh, um, shirt, uh, six ounces per f uh, yard squared of fabric. Uh, and this particular shirt has an 8.2 ATPV or arc thermal protective value. Uh, it 8.2 would represent the calorie level uh, of uh, energy that this shirt would protect against. So theoretically, if we're in an arc event and uh, it's an 8.2 calorie event, uh, I could essentially expect to receive no more than a second degree burn when I have this shirt on, as long as my uh, all available skin is covered up with the cloth. Uh, the shirt comes comes in a various uh, colors and can be ordered uh, with uh, medium blue, dark blue, or khaki. Uh, we can have all the embroidery done for you. Uh, it's in FR thread. Uh, your logo and the tag logo can be put on that uh, as well and is done that way. Uh, then we would go to the pants, and the pants are 9 ounces per yard squared. They're a little bit heavier because pants would have a tendency to uh, uh, wear a little quicker. And uh, these pants, this fabric, by the way, is called uh, Endura Ultra Soft. Now, Endura Ultra Soft is a blend of cotton nylon. It's 88% cotton and 12% nylon. Very comfortable, uh, very lightweight, basically. Uh, in this category, and it's uh, essentially made of mostly of cotton, which breathes. So perceptually, it gives us a, a feeling of uh, comfort because it's what we typically migrate to. Plant, pants only come in uh, in um, dark blue, uh, and, and so that uh, that's the option that you have there. Uh, we would uh, then migrate or kind of uh, go towards uh, outerwear at this point if you had to work outside uh, because we need to talk about that in the elements, uh, working in the elements, and we need to realize that our outermost layer uh, of clothing has to be FR. So we can't wear uh, a Carhartt, a regular Carhartt jacket over top of this FR clothing uh, essentially because that Carhartt jacket would burn in an arc event. So we have specialized clothing for uh, outerwear. Uh, as required by the NFPA 70E standard. I've got a couple of examples here today. Uh, one is made by Carhartt, and uh, it's one of the better known uh, garment brands, so uh, we essentially would show this to you today. And this is just a, 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 a half uh, jacket. Uh, it is lined uh, some, to some degree. And this is actually good for about 24 calories. And the way you know that this is an FR garment is you would, would find that information on the tag right here, uh, sewn on the front of the garment. And then, of course, you have all the information uh, on the inside that's uh, going to tell you exactly how many calories it's good for uh, and the laundry care instructions. So uh, basically, if you keep that in mind that your outermost layer has to be FR, 
uh, you couldn't get into trouble with that. Uh, some, subsequently, you might have to work in uh, inclement weather as well, in, uh, in a light rain possibly, and there is a um, PVC, FR coated PVC rain suit here that we brought in and uh, what we normally talk about in class. This is good for about five to six calories. It's not a real high arc rating, uh, but uh, it does offer some protection and essentially assures us that this will not light on fire uh, if you're in an arc event. Um, and if you notice uh, in the background, we have one uh, up on the, the board there and it has been through a test and it works really well. So we've got uh, basically our daily wear covered. We've got uh, shirt and pants. We talked about that. Uh, we essentially uh, want to pay attention to the laundering uh, uh, requirements for these things. If we're going to self-launder them, we can't use uh, chlorine-based detergent uh, and no fabric softener. Uh, there's some temperature requirements as well, but our home laundering uh, systems won't allow us to get to that high of temperature. So uh, let's move on to blast suits, uh, and uh, we're going to start with the lightest weight blast suit that we have in the class today, and that is uh, uh, a 12-calorie set of coveralls, which is uh, commonly used by service uh, personnel, maybe uh, other parts of your company that would uh, maybe have to do service work. And um, what we recommend for them, uh, instead of going with uh, some lighter weight uh, garment uh, where you're at the, at the minimum for uh, such as 8 calories uh, required, by hazardous category 2 in the 70E standard, we would recommend that you use a 12 calorie set of coveralls. Uh, coveralls seem to have the most versatile use uh, within um, the type of businesses that we do uh, if you're not going to put your guys in what I call daily wear, which is uh, shirt and pants. So the coveralls, uh, typically the way we would uh, recommend it is uh, possibly issuing two sets of coveralls, one for the summer, uh, which is a little tighter fitting. Uh, you don't have to worry about the, uh, the clothes underneath it. And then a, a larger size to fit over top of garments like uh, Carhartt uh, bibs and things that uh, electricians would use as, uh, as warmth uh, protection. All right, moving uh, from the uh, the coveralls, we would uh, then complement the coveralls with a face shield. Uh, and basically, we were talking about a 12-calorie set of coveralls, again, that gets you past that bare minimum uh, into hazardous category 2, uh, where it's a minimum of 8 calories is required. Uh, we recommend 12 uh, to keep you beyond that uh, bare minimum. Uh, the face shield that we recommend is an Oberon face shield. It's full face shield. Uh, and with side extensions and chin extension, uh, meets the requirements of the 70E standard. This is the best in the industry right now. It's got less distortion, um, positive light let through, uh, lighter tinting than, than most of the competitors, and it seems to hold up better uh, under severe use. Uh, in conjunction with that um, uh, uh, face shield, sometimes you're going to be required to wear a, what's called a balaclava, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So then we've got some of the uh, various garments that uh, also would go underneath your shirt and pants uh, if you needed warmth. Uh, you could use uh, this six ounce uh, Henley t-shirt that's good for about eight calories as well. Um, and and uh, then we would move on to uh, our next uh, level of blast suit. Now we've got a lot of blast suits with us today and, and we talk about them in various uh, phases because uh, there's good and then there's better. And the better ones are made with the, uh, the, the type of face shield that's larger face shield with lighter tint. Uh, but there's all kinds of different uh, brands and makes out there. Uh, again, we've tested all these things uh, with electricians at Sargent Electric, uh, and we've got a lot of positive feedback on the brands that we recommend that the tech technicians use uh, because we found that uh, if we really want to make sure that the guys are using this equipment out in the field, uh, it has to be comfortable for them. Um, so there's a lot of different brands, but the one we've settled on is the, the Oberon system. And um, the Oberon system that uh, the tech technicians uh, are required to use use uh, is a 40 calorie blast jacket okay so that's rated at 40 calories and we have bib overalls also rated at 40 calories okay um, and then because you're going to be wearing eight calorie uh, shirt and pants or 11 calorie pants uh, instead of using the 40 calorie the hood uh, at 40 calories, we can uh, optimize our safety dollars by moving up to the 65 calorie hood. Uh, basically, almost the same tinting, 
So it's really not that, that different. Um, and by, by utilizing the 65 calorie hood, when we start to layer our fabrics, our, our um, calorie ratings on our fabrics, we now have essentially eight with our shirt and we really have 49 with the jacket. It's rated at 49 even though it's called a 40 calorie. Um, so basically we've got 57 calories of uh, protection on our body at that point so we can move up to a 65 calorie hood. Uh, subsequently, if you had to buy a 65 cal suit for any reason, you would already have the hood, so you wouldn't have to make that purchase. It kind of saves you uh, a great deal of money when you're, when you're outfitting multiple technicians. Now, uh, that's essentially it uh, when it comes to the, uh, the blast suits. Uh, of course, there's some other products out there that, that are required when you wear these blast suits for comfort. And uh, one of those is uh, what we call a cooling vest. Uh, a cooling vest is specially designed. It's got FR fabric in it, or it's made, constructed from FR fabric. And it's filled with uh, reusable gel packs that you would put into a, an igloo ice chest, right? And you charge these by just simply Put, storing them in the ice for a matter of about an hour and, uh, and then you load the vest with them. Uh, once you load the vest, put it on and it uh, proceeds to keep your body core temperature from rising uh, past a certain point. Now it's good, they're good for about an hour, uh, which is really all, about, all the length of time that you're going to be in that coat anyway before you want to take a break. Uh, you simply take those out, replace them with the second set that you have chilling in the ice bucket, uh, and reload your vest and put it back on again. Uh, and essentially, um, we're going to talk about uh, cooling fans in just a minute. All right, so uh, we've gotten all the way up to the hood and, and we've talked about the cooling vest and, and now we need to talk about the uh, fan system that goes inside the hood. Uh, I can't take this hood apart right now to show you, but on the back of the hood now, on the newer hoods, uh, we've got a pocket that holds a, uh, a self-contained fan with a, with a uh, FR rated hose uh, that goes into a bladder that actually zips into the top of this hood. Uh, the nice, one of the nice features about these hoods is you, you do not have to buy the blower initially you can retrofit it into the hood without having to buy a new hood. So that's what we've done here. We've retrofitted the bladder into the top of the hood. Uh, we put the blower fan on here and it sits right on the back of the, uh, the hood itself. So it's a self-contained unit. Uh, there is another type of this blower which straps to your belt and it's got a longer hood on it. Uh, we, can, we can supply both of those. We've found though that this is a little bit more convenient now uh, and the guys tend to like this a little bit better. Uh, it's operated on AA batteries. Uh, you can use rechargeable batteries if you want or, or disposable batteries uh, that last about eight hours. A set of batteries lasts about eight hours. The important part about that air system uh, entering into the hood, when you put this hood on, uh, and I would put it on except you wouldn't be able to hear me talk, so I won't do that, um, but when you put this hood on, uh, it really starts to cut down on your oxygen a little bit because it seals around your chest, your back, and your shoulders uh, to keep the arc flash energy from entering into your face area. Um, so it's important that you get some air entering in there uh, to, number one, keep the face shield from fogging, and number two, just uh, keeping the O2 level up for the user. Uh, works really, really well. It's about the third generation of this fan, uh, and again, it's very, very lightweight. Um, other options are out there, and we don't recommend them because they're, they're heavy, they're awkward to use. Uh, other suppliers, like I said, this is a Salisbury fan system, and it requires a special hood, uh, and it weighs about, uh, oh, five or six pounds, so uh, it just adds to the amount of uh, weight that you're carrying around with you. So next I'd like to talk about tools, uh, and for that we're going to have to reset here, so I'll, I'll, I'll let Rick uh, reset everything, and we'll talk about it in a minute. All right, uh, we're on to the section on insulated tools, and uh, one of the uh, requirements of the OSHA standard uh, is that we use voltage-rated gloves and insulated tools to shield ourselves from coming in contact with uh, energized equipment. Uh, this has been a part of the standard for about 40 years. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of electricians don't have the proper um, uh, insulated tools, and uh, one of the primary reasons for arc events starting in the first place is uh, using incorrect tools. Uh, 
um, because people drop tools all the time. So one of the things that we did was to actually analyze the type of tools that are out there. And of course, we went with the two most popular brands, uh, Ideal and uh, Klein. And we've got Klein's right here um, that we were look at and Ideal's as well as uh, another set um, of um, what we call Cementex. So uh, essentially, Klein's are very expensive. It's the best tool on the market right now. But we don't really require um, that quality because we're not going to be doing this much insulated or actually energized work uh, with tools. So uh, what we've done is we've gone with a company called Cementex. Cementex uses mostly American tools for their cores. Uh, it's a dipped process, two color stages, uh, yellow on the inside, orange on the outside. Uh, it's test, they're tested at 10,000 uh, volts and uh, rated at 1,000 volts. So we've got a 10 to 1 safety factor built in here. And uh, what we like about these tools is their weight, um, the quality of the core, uh, the quality of the insulation, and the design of the tools uh, with big finger guards and good cutter blades and nice weight. Uh, they weigh a lot, very similar to the Klein tools. Uh, one of the things that we recommend is for an average electrician would be a nine-piece set of tools. And in that nine-piece set, we have uh, the um, uh, Lyman's pliers, we have a pair of uh, crimpers and wire strippers, we've got needle nose, we've got uh, diagonal cutters. We've got a number of straight bladed screwdrivers as well as Phillips head screwdrivers. And then we go one step further and we add holding screwdrivers to this nine piece set and actually make it an 11 piece set. Uh, we put a straight edge holding screwdriver and a Phillips edge or Phillips tip screwdriver in there, holding screwdrivers. And what these do is they allow the technicians to um, start screws, small screws, uh, that they can put on the end of these holding screwdrivers and start those screws into their respective spots without touching, uh, without taking their gloves off and actually getting their hands nine inches further away from the energized surface. Uh, distance is important when we're working on energized equipment that we don't have our hands right in there uh, up close and personal to the uh, the arc event. Um, so that's a nice uh, nine piece set which becomes an 11 piece set made by Cementex, uh, very attractively priced. Uh, we can actually offer that for about two-thirds of what the uh, the Klein set costs, which is a great savings for most of us. Uh, we also have uh, uh, fuse pullers, which are required, again, by the standard to be used uh, when removing fuses. Uh, these are insulated. There's numerous different styles uh, that we offer. Uh, and again, they are required by the standards, so uh, it's all part of the electrician's tools that, uh, that he would normally use. Now that's the small kit. Uh, there's a big kit, a deluxe kit called a 61-piece kit uh, that most contractors buy. Uh, and uh, what that includes is some of your sockets. It'll include a torque wrench. Uh, it'll include some T-handled uh, uh, hex wrenches uh, and so forth. So we get uh, a lot more of the basic tools that we would need to make some adjustments and torquing different buses and uh, stuff like that. So um, you have both sets there. Uh, the 61 piece set uh, is called the deluxe set and it really is uh, one of those things that you would uh, um, kind of uh, make sure that you give out uh, uh, with control because there's so many pieces to it. This is more the everyday kit uh, for using by the individual electrician. Uh, they also have things like uh, inspection mirrors uh, that are insulated, okay, so that you can look up on top of things without um, without dropping uh, into uh, parts and pieces into holes. Uh, this mirror is actually non-glass, um, so it would be approved for working in food distribution areas as well. Um, again, uh, voltage rated um, torque wrenches, uh, essentially inch pounds and foot pounds uh, are included, one would be included in the 61 piece kit. Uh, of course, we also have metric tools as well uh, for Canada and uh, Europe. Uh, and uh, all types of various uh, nut drivers and, and the like. Uh, there's about 485 pieces in the Cementex lineup, uh, which is one of the main reasons why we like them. Um, so that kind of takes, uh, takes us into uh, rubber goods. And uh, essentially, we've got six classes of rubber goods out there. 
um, that an electrician might have to deal with. Uh, of course, we started the lowest class, which would be class double zero rubber, uh, which is good for 500 volts. Uh, and a class of double zero uh, rubber gloves uh, would essentially uh, look like this. The kit would be the bag, uh, which is an important part of it. This is a storage bag that offers protection to the rubber gloves uh, and keeps them uh, basically hanging uh, in their storage bag so that there's no pressure being put on them. It extends the life of them. Uh, and then we've got the rubber gloves. Uh, with a leather uh, protector uh, over top of it. It's important that you understand um, that we can't separate these and use these rubber gloves uh, without the leather protectors. Uh, the, the rubber in these gloves is very um, uh, sensitive and can be torn or ripped easily uh, just like your skin. So the leather gloves are worn over top of them to do two things. It protects the rubber from damage but also protects you from extreme heat of an arc flash uh, uh, incident. Uh, all the accidents that we've investigated or been a part of investigating, uh, wherever they had the right class of gloves on, uh, they had no damage to their hands. Uh, it's important that you get the gloves the right size. As you noticed right there, I was having a little bit of difficulty getting that glove off. Uh, these are size nine and a half, so I actually wear a size 10. Uh, and it's important that uh, you get the right size so that you're not fighting and struggling with those gloves to put them on and off. Uh, and we've got uh, the gloves that go from class double zeros uh, to class zero, which is good for 1,000 volts, uh, all the way up through class four, which is good for 37,000 volts. Uh, most electricians would not have to use those gloves. Uh, those would be strictly for linemen uh, to use, but uh, they are available uh, if required to work on uh, the systems that we're working on. Then we've, we move on up to sleeves. Uh, these are voltage rated sleeves. And uh, the idea behind sleeves is when you are um, uh, working with your voltage rated gloves, uh, you may have an occasion where you've got to reach past something um, to actually work on it, like uh, possibly uh, installing a split CT. And uh, what you would do in this case is you would have your gloves on and uh, and then you would have you would put a sleeve on over top of that to protect the rest of your arm okay, from that glove up to your shoulder. Uh, and I'm not going to put the other one on, but uh, you get the idea of, of how this works. So we're protected all the way from the tip of our fingers to our shoulder in case we have to reach past something that, that is energized. Uh, we're offered a maximum protection there. Of course, sleeves come in four different uh, grades. We've got class zeros here, which are nice and easy to use. Uh, and uh, most of the TEG electrical contractors uh, would opt for these class zeros. Of course, we've got all the way up to a class four. Uh, which is extremely heavy and good for 37,000 volts. Again, uh, most contractors would not use those. Uh, essentially, we've got some blankets uh, that uh, we've got examples of here. These are class two blankets, good for 17,000 volts. Uh, of course, these are smaller versions. They're, they come in 42 inch by 42 inch squares. Uh, they're held on with blanket clips um, of different types. We've got fiber, uh, two types of fiber, and we've got a wood uh, blanket clip, and then uh, sometimes uh, you're not allowed to use wood in, in uh, food processing plants, so you'd be required to use a fiber clamp to hold it on. I've, I've got some other roll products as well that... <clears throat> that we can use uh, to protect ourselves again against uh, voltage, uh, shock protection. Uh, essentially, these come in 30-foot uh, long rolls. They're at various uh, voltage ratings. Uh, this is a two-color uh, section here that's good for 7,200 volts. I'm sorry, 7,500 volts. Uh, and we can use this to drape any type of um, piece of equipment that we would need to protect uh, ourselves against shock. And this can actually be held on with something as simple as duct tape and or the blanket clips that we showed you before. Uh, one of the other roll products that we have here is a 1,000 volt roll. Uh, again, it comes in a 30 foot long by 36 inch wide roll. Uh, it's cut, you cut it to the size that you need. It is disposable, but it's not considered to be single use. Um, one of the things I want to uh, mention about rubber products is they have to be dielectrically tested. Uh, gloves, blankets, and sleeves have to be dielectrically tested before they're issued to the workers. So that's when they're brand new right out of the store. Uh, they have to come with a dielectric stamp on them. Um, and um, here's an example of that stamp right here. 
it's done in dielectric ink uh, and what it does is it gives us the test voltage and the test date and who tested it. Uh, this has to be done every six months for gloves. That same type of uh, stamp will be done on blankets and sleeves as well. Uh, there's different time periods. Uh, sleeves and blankets are done once a year. Uh, here's an, here's a, uh, an example of a sleeve that failed a, uh, a dielectric test, and I'm not sure whether you can see it or not, but there's a circle drawn on here because it's, it's split wide open uh, where that rubber has failed. Okay. And if we have failed rubber, if we have holes or cracks in it like that, it will not protect you. Um, so that is, that is a, a rejected blanket from the test lab. All right, uh, we're moving on to blast blankets. Uh, and when you have to do some work in manholes or other vaults or things where we're working on possibly a high voltage splice or around high voltage cables or other energized cables, uh, there could be a need to have uh, a blast blanket uh, this, this is a small section of one naturally. They come 10 foot by 10 foot uh, with different eyelets on them for mounting to uh, vault walls and so forth with carabiners uh, and straps. So what you would do is you would uh, kind of uh, uh, protect yourself by putting any of the energized cables behind this, uh, allowing you to work on the other side of it. If something were to happen and we had a blast, uh, it would direct the energy away from you. So there's a couple of different brands of that. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is grounding, uh, and uh, we have grounding clusters that we offer uh, to the contractors. Uh, we make them up at, at Cornerstone. Uh, we can do any type of configuration that you need, uh, and it's important that we understand that a grounding uh, cluster or a grounding conductor uh, be constructed of the proper um, uh, clamps, uh, the proper cable with the right impedance, uh, the proper rating on the clamps, uh, and there's a really good reason why we use something like this instead of a homemade uh, grounding system. Uh, and one of the reasons, the important reasons, is uh, when you install that, uh, you'll install it with a hot stick instead of your fingers, um, and uh, you put the hot stick together. And uh, this clamp is designed to accept this unit on the end of this hot stick. And you can actually turn that and adjust it or install it uh, at a distance. And that distance can be as great as eight feet. So um, uh, I'm actually not having to touch that clamp. Um, and I can actually t put, it to, put it on, tighten it up with it, without ever touching it with my hands. Okay. Uh, this also serves as a rescue hook. We've designed a rescue hook specifically for TEG contractors. Uh, that's required by the, uh, the standard to have some means of rescue. So we've designed this rescue hook that we create. We've uh, manufactured ourselves. Uh, it's insulated. It bolts right on to the telescoping hot stick and becomes now it becomes a rescue hook. Okay? And you can reach in and rescue the person uh, if something an event happens. All right, now we're moving on to uh, testers, and uh, essentially we're not going to talk a whole lot about testers tonight, but uh, uh, we have various types on the table here just to uh, give the guys some, uh, some hands-on knowledge on what's available out there. Uh, of course, we've got a uh, remote tester here that goes on the end of that hot stick as well. Uh, this is called a mushroom head detector. Uh, it's made by Salisbury. It's got a voltage range, I think, of 240 volts up to, uh, um, I'm, I'm thinking 200. 140,000. So <clears throat> essentially uh, uh, most of these small uh, tick tracers and things, uh, voltage pens we don't recommend to use, but uh, we have some examples here uh, as well. That about does it for the different types of protective gear that we have. Uh, of course, we've got boots, dielectric boots. Uh, we've got EH-rated boots for, uh, uh, for the electrician, which uh, means that there's no metal running through the sole form. Uh, and essentially, everybody has the, the right hard hats uh, uh, that are contained with the, uh, the face shields and the helmets. So with that, uh, that's about what we have to tell you as far as PPE.